Iowa Catholic Radio presents the Daily Mass from St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church in West Des Moines. Father Joseph Pins, pastor. Father John Broby, associate pastor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. It is great today, it's great to be here today to celebrate these great mysteries, these great mysteries that Christ has brought to us. Continue on our Lenten journey. But before we begin, let us take time to recall our sins and our failures. We better prepare ourselves for these mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. We implore your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as the feast of our salvation draws ever closer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly towards the worthy celebration of the Paschal Mystery. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, This is what I commanded my people. Listen to my voice. Then I will be your God, and you shall be my people. Walk in all the ways that I command you, so that you may prosper. But they obeyed me not, nor did they pay heed. They walked in the hardness of their evil hearts, and turned their backs, not their faces, to me. From the day that your fathers left the land of Egypt, even to this day, I have sent you untiringly all my servants, the prophets. Yet they have not obeyed me nor paid heed. They have stiffened their necks and done worse than their fathers. When you speak all these words to them, they will not listen to you either. When you call to them, They will not answer you. Say to them, This is the nation that does not listen to the voice of the Lord its God, or take correction. Faithfulness has disappeared. The word itself is banished from their speech. The word of the Lord. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massah in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, for I am gracious and merciful. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was uh, driving out demons that Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute and when the demon had gone out the mute man spoke and the crowds were amazed 
Some of them said, By the power of Beelzebul, the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Others, to test him, asked him for a sign from heaven. But he knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste, and the house will fall against house. And if Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For if you say that it is by Beelzebul that I drive out demons, if I then drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your own people drive them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man fully armed guards his palace, his possessions are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks and overcomes him, he takes away the armor on which he relied and distributes the spoils. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. When I say the term spiritual warfare, are you aware of that term, number one? And number two, do you know what it truly means? It's a great way to look at this gospel message. It's the spiritual warfare that we encounter every day in our prayer life, in our work life, in our family life, in really trying to find the true voice of Christ. The prophet Jeremiah today Jesus, uh, God says, listen to my voice. So to know your voice, to know the, the Lord's voice. The psalm says it as well. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Do you know his voice? And can you distinguish it from the voice of the enemy? St. Ignatius of Loyola, who started the Jesuits, It's a great way of explaining the spiritual life and also spiritual warfare. He was a warrior. He was a soldier before he really, truly met God. And part of what he says, there's all kinds of different things that he kind of puts forth to us. Still very important today and has helped many people's spiritual lives throughout the centuries. One of the things he says is that the enemy is weak. The enemy is weak. Maybe in today's way we need to look at it as we're in March Madness to see that we are with Christ when we have Christ within us, we are that eight foot, that ten foot center that no one can dunk on. And the enemy is that four foot six center, but he's whispering in your ear, you can't stop me. You can't stop me. I'm here. There's no way you'll ever be able to stop me. I have things that you don't have. But when we truly see the true size of who we are with Christ, He's nothing. When we open up our eyes to what God has to offer us and what God has to show us and how we can disperse the enemy with the name of Jesus, with a Hail Mary, knowing that these tools are given to us to defeat the enemy, we start to see the wonder and the glory of who God truly is. And we want to hear His voice, not the whispers of the enemy. Because the whispers of the enemy will get us to think that we are defeated. 
The whispers of the enemy will try to make us look like we are too small to defeat the enemy. I listened to Jeff Caven's reflection today on the Hallow app, and I usually don't do that until after the Mass. But he had a great line in there. When we truly know the voice of Christ, this is probably true. We live with a life of gratitude or we live a life of resentment. We live and there's no in-between, Mr. Caven says. If we live a life of gratitude, we are so grateful because we've opened up the veil, we've seen and we've heard the voice of our God and we see that what He's doing in the world. And we're grateful. We see those great things. We, we see and hear how people are converted. We see and hear how, how prayer is answered. But if we're not hearing His voice, we don't know Him, we start to live a life of resentment. Resentment towards our politicians. Resentment towards the church leaders. Resentment towards this or that because they're destroying the world instead of seeing our God in the world. We have resentment towards men women and children for they're not doing what we want them to do. But if we hear the voice of Christ, let our hearts not be hardened. Let us rejoice. Let us know that we, with the voice of God, can defeat the enemy. And the enemy is not seen or heard if we truly are hearing his voice. He will try to whisper, but then we can have the response, St. Teresa of Avila, when the enemy came to her in the middle of the night. She simply said, oh, it's just you, and rolled back over to sleep. Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you to offer you our prayers and our petitions. For the leaders of the church, may the Lord sustain them with wisdom and humility. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our national and civic leaders, may God grant them strength to stand for goodness and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those struggling with chronic illness, may God bring them healing of mind and body. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may the Lord look graciously upon us and keep us safely in his care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they soon be at peace with our loving Father for all eternity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that are in the depths of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, these are but a few of our prayers and petitions. We humbly ask them to your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, food of the earth and work of human hands. You will become for us the bread of life. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, food of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrary to this, we make our steadfast obedience to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, of all my iniquities and cleanse me from my many sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
Cleanse your people, Lord, we pray, from every taint of wickedness, that their gifts may be pleasing to you, and do not let them cling to false joys, for you promise them the rewards of your truth, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation to always endeavor to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, to be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks, you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. 
as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the God, by the will of the Father, and the Holy Spirit, through your death, and life to the world, free me by this, your most holy body, from all my sins, and keep me faithful to your commandments, and never let me depart from you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be may the body of Christ. Keep me safe, Lord. The body of Christ. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion antiphon. You have laid down your precepts to be carefully kept. May my ways be firm in keeping your statutes. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with the sacrament that we may come to possess your salvation, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. We call on your loving kindness and trust in your mercy, O Lord, that since we have from you all that we are, through your grace we may seek what is right, and have strength to do the good we desire. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. You've been listening to the Daily Mass from St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church in West Des Moines on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network.